Good evening once again this Tuesday. Welcome to your favorite show, The Law and You. Last week, we were speaking about the small claims, and I hope it was very interactive. Today, we have a very, very nice topic, especially because of the young people that have been promised a lot in this government to be creative and to be able to think outside the box. The biggest question we're asking ourselves, if you come up with an idea, if you come up with a new song, if you come up with a new invention, what happens? Today, we'll be dealing with intellectual properties, and I have my guests of the show that you guys have grown to like. Wakili, Karibu, say hi to the people. Asante Sana, thank you for having me on the show. Yes. We are ready. You are, you are, you are ready. Yes. Just but before we go to intellectual property, uh -huh. last, uh, last show, uh, out of the shows that we have had, we have a lot of feedback from people. And thank you very much for the people asking questions. It, it feels nice knowing that we are, we are interacting with people. We don't talk to ourselves. So uh, I have two questions that I would like us to answer, then we can move on to our topic of the day. One person asks, what happens if the husbands disown them? What she is saying is that they are legally married, but the husband has moved out to live with Ampango Akando. So siku divorce, siku achi, na sikai na wewe. So I think she's asking what to do. Uh, Maybe, Wakili, I don't know what, what happens in a situation like that because someone is not divorcing you but he has left you and is already living with someone else. Uh, that is actually one of the grounds of divorce. Uh, mm -hmm. We call it desertion yeah. because the person has already moved on, probably rented out another house yeah. and they are living with another woman. Uh, you have a ground to divorce this person because they have already deserted you. Yeah. But also, even before you proceed and do uh, that, uh, sometimes as lawyers, we advise that you see whether there are other mechanisms that can actually work. Can, uh, can you speak, can you get the elders to speak to this person? But also, this being a Christian show, and for us being believers, yeah. have you prayed about it? Yeah. So beyond all this, uh, um, you have a ground to, for the divorce. Yeah, have you yeah. prayed about it? Yes, it's a, it's a, it's something I think when people are stressed, they don't like listening. But uh, over time, we have realized even sometimes we go to court and things are just hectic, mm. and we are like, God, lead me on this, and it comes true. I think the biggest question with that lady, I think she still has the mentality: the husband is the one who is supposed to make the first move to divorce, mm. uh, to divorce her, or to separate her, uh, or maybe to reconcile. I, I want to believe. All of you are equal between you, man and wife. You are equal in terms of the law. Uh, yes, from a Christian perspective, is the whole head of the home. And what you have said is that he has stopped leading the home. Mm. So I think it's for you. You can continue living like that. You can decide to go seek help. You can decide to 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 start the process and maybe separate. Although now the Bible does not allow for divorce. It says only in areas of adultery or maybe violence. That's when maybe. If someone's life is in danger so mm. uh, i think it's something that you need to talk to someone we encourage most churches these days have counselors who can walk you through and help you another question that you have have is a very interesting one mm -hmm. someone says uh, okay i don't think i want to name his name but he says i'm so and so uh, what a nice program very educative asante sana my question is, I got a child with a lady way back 13 years. We stayed like husband and wife, though we were new in life. But after a while, she left me when my job ended. Mm. I think that is uh, for squeeze to a character development. <laughs> so and she went back machinani. So now later on, everyone of them moved on. The, uh, the man moved on and the lady moved on. But what he has discovered, he has come to learn later on, the name of his child, the 13 year old child, was the place of the father Sia Meandikwa mm. is a stepfather mm. now the new husband to the mother mm. and he says it irritates him mm. which I agree with him mm. yes you are irritated that is normal mm. but now I think the biggest question is he's not asking us to answer this question as counselors he's asking us as lawyers what do you do in a situation like that so that the name of my child can come back to me. If you are the biological father of a child, yeah. um, the next step you should be able to take is actually get a court order for a DNA test to be done uh -huh. on the child to confirm the paternity of the child. 
and once this is done and you have that court order one of the other prayers you can ask the court to do for you is to or request one of the requests you can ask the judge or the magistrate to do for you is to also get the name of uh, the step dad of the step dad struck out or removed from that birth certificate yeah. and replaced with your name so it, it's it's something that can be corrected it's something that can be corrected yeah but i think you have noted you have to go to court because this is what i tell people a lot of people come and be like hey it has no support <laughs> i tell people you cannot re- it's one of the hardest things you cannot in fact it's let's say this you cannot remove the the name of the father or the mother from the birth certificate without mm. a court order mm. if he is alive or if he is dead mm. But if it is X, 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 at least now that is even easier. You can be like, this is the father of the child, this is the mother of the child, but when you are taking the birth certificate, at to Naidiake, at to Meeka, and you are allowed to put, you can place, but Kutoa, it's very hard. Mm. Yes, it's possible for the person who has asked this question, but you need to go to court. Let her, what Wakilia said, first go get her DNA, confirm this is your child. After you confirm this is your child, now pray for the court for that bad certificate be struck out and destroyed and that you want be put in place so we come to the topic of today mm. people have asked uh innovation intellectual property mm. what is intellectual property maybe you can start from the intellectual property or maybe let me put this way for people to understand whenever you come with a new inno- innovation Maybe you have come with a new way of drilling water, you have come with a way of kuasha moto, you have come with a, with a new car, mm. with a new bluebird, or with a new bread, a, a new something, a new, a new something that is not in the market. Mm, mm, mm. That's Ioni Mawazoyako Mazuri. Mm. So what we call it in the law, we call it intellectual property. So I would like you to, maybe a, people to understand why is it called intellectual property and what are the different forms of intellectual property as you're able to move on? Well, uh, intellectual property is called so because it's an in- innovation and it comes from um, a creative mind. And to just set the basis, it is actually recognized under our constitution uh-huh. as a property. So you can actually in Inuba, use it. In Kamogoda, it's something you can actually property, place yes. value on, on, it. Yeah. on it. And so you can even use your intellectual property to actually uh, as a collateral uh-huh. for a loan in a bank. Uh-huh. And so, one, the constitution recognizes that as a property for any person. And number two, any innovation that you have then needs to be uh, qualified uh, under what category it qualifies in. Mm-hmm. And so we have three, uh, no, actually four, uh, that, uh, um, types of uh, intellectual properties. Uh-huh. So you could ever be a copyright. Copyright. And a copyright is that idea that has been reduced in a hard form. Either in writing in a, or something. In writing yeah. or in a disc. Yeah. So you could have probably come up with a song. Yeah. Or a business idea, a proposal mm-hmm. that you are going to present to a company. Uh-huh. And so for you to protect it, you need to copyright it by reducing it in a hard form. In a written form. In a written form. Something tangible. Tangible uh-huh. that can be seen. Uh-huh. That becomes a copyright. And then uh, from this, it could be a new way of doing something. Uh-huh. So for example, the, a very common example is how we send money in Kenya. We use our mobile phones. And you send money from a mobile phone. And the next person approaches a, a shop. And in, instead of withdrawing a message, we withdraw money, money in cash. That money has actually been transferred from Masaba or to Kilifi. And you actually can't remove money within that split second. That money can be withdrawn. That in- invention of transferring, for example, money, is what we call a patent. Patent. So you can patent that innovation. An idea, an innovation. Idea, innovation of yeah. doing something. And then we have a third one, which is uh, if you have come up with an exclusive title, name, or a design of something. So, for example, it could be even the law and you, uh-huh. which is something that uh, probably 
the, 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 the actual person being you being Ken Babu has actually come up with the law and you yeah. and you could have introduced it uh, because it never existed before and you want to own it yeah. exclusively and that will be qualified as a trademark, as a trademark. or it could even be uh, a design that you have actually come up with the way you write your S yeah and so that a unique a logo, the S, yeah. yes distinguishing yourself if you distinguish an idea then that qualifies as a trademark uh -huh. Then uh, we have the fourth one, which is uh, industrial designs. And these are, most of the time, you find bottles of uh, packaging items being reduced and registered. So if you come up with a new design of storing something, you can register an industrial design. Those are the four things, and I think it's very important today for us to go slowly, because the new era where the country is going, mm. it's going on innovation. Mm. And there's a lot of money. And I, when you sit down with people, you feel people are like, oh, nilikuwa na idea, nilikuwa na proposal, nikapeleke u kampuni. Then later on, I saw them in implementing the, my idea. And you as young people, we as old people, we as people are thinking, mm. you continue doing the same, complaining, mm. but nothing will change. Mm. To, will change. Mm. And when you have talked even about the industrial designs, if you go to deal with Ukukamkunji, Naukochini and everything, you find even people making new designs of cups, glasses, and everything. And you'll find a rich person will come take the design, mm. go produce it, and mass. Mm. In fact, let me give you even another sad affair. You see this Maasai mm -hmm. bracelet. Mm -hmm. There's, I think, is it in Japan or China? Someone has trademarked it as it is. Mm. And we know this is a Kenyan thing, mm. and they have trademarked it from an international, uh, no, patented from an international level. Mm. Because I think one thing maybe Wakil will talk about later on is that you can patent an idea here, but if you have not done it in South Africa, someone else in South Africa can do it mm. in the UK, mm. but you can also do it at an international level. So that now, every in the world, people can know that you cannot use the word the law and you. Mm. So you have talked about patenting, you have talked about trademark, you have talked about industrial design, and the fourth one you have talked about uh, Copyright. copyrights. Mm. Copyright, <coughs> especially on the issue of music. Mm -hmm. Because you are seeing a lot of things on YouTube being struck out. You say, America, kuna kuna wimbo ingine likuwa ime vuma juzi. Ukienda YouTube, unakuta ni kumi. Sita itaja saiko, saija ufoka. Udena, unakuta ni kumi. All of them are to be pulled down. And the artist add to it's not a bad song, so it's a it's more of like a a, a cultural song. Mm. So, ukakuta ni moje me panda ju, and I was looking at it and I was like, if this guy had copyrighted this song from Kitambo and did the right thing, mm. he would have had a lot of views at this moment. Because imagine getting it down, then re-advertising it again. Yes. So I don't know Wakili. Today I want we just deal with one aspect of that, mm. then as we continue to build up, so that you can help the people who are watching. That the ideas, their geniuses who sit down, design something nice, put a nice logo, for even companies. I've mm. had even companies come, you design, you're not given anything. I'm on a lip on exposure. <laughs> so we, what we are trying to do with the law and you, as we said, we want to give you knowledge, because the Bible says my people perish because of lack of knowledge. And to start off today, we want to deal with the issue on trademarks. Trademarks, what is it? How do we go about it? How do we register it? How do we defend it? That and much more will come to you shortly after this break to come and discuss some trademarks. Do you want to be a master of your money saving skills or are you looking for a financial partner for your loan needs? Well, Ukomboze Sako is your go-to financial partner for your growth and development. Register with us today and enjoy our saving products such as deposit account where you make monthly, weekly or daily contributions, Jenga Junior, travel account and Christmas account. Get affordable instant mobile loans via the USSD Star 346 Hash and other loan products like Biashara Loans, Development, Emergency, School Fees Loans, Insurance and Premium Loans. Visit us in any of our offices countrywide. For more information, contact us on 0719 
0712-307-0707-130-830-884. Follow us on our social media handles. Ukumbozi Sako, together for a brighter future. Welcome back to your favorite show, The Law and You. Every Tuesday at 8 p.m., we are in your screens on One Accord TV, One Accord YouTube, and One Accord Facebook page. Please invite your friends, share this program. If you have any questions, there's a number going down on your screen and an email address. You can be able to contact us, ask any questions. Is there a topic that you want us to talk about? Please feel free. To share with us we value your feedback wakili before we went for the break mm. we are talking about trademarks yes so on the issue of trademarks what is a trademark how do i register it where do i register it okay a trademark is a uh, it's either a logo or a name that yeah. gives you uh, identity and so for you to do that then you need to show that you exclusively own that name or or design yeah and in most cases you will find yourself uh, owning a trademark by the virtue of having the first person who establish let's say that name or design and so the registration happens uh, whereby you are required to present the name and they will ask you for 12 uh, uh, copies of that name uh, then they will ask you also to have a uh, an agent doing it for you. Who will do it for you? And this agent need to, needs to be registered. A registered agent? Yes. Which in this case is an advocate? Is an advocate. Oh, okay. And so once you have uh, the two, the design, uh, then you need to establish who is owning this, this uh, name or this logo. And so you will be required to, to declare who is actually owning it. And is it, it an be, individual? Is it a company? Yes. Uh -huh. And if, uh, if it's in a company, of course, you need to have had a resolution saying that so-and-so is going to own the name or the company is going to own the name. And then if it's an individual, you can easily just uh, declare that to you as an individual, you're going to own that trademark. Yeah. Then proceed on and uh, present uh, this uh, one agent will present his appointment as an agent yeah. and he's going to also uh, present the name that you are trademarking and that one goes for a review of the application which takes some bit of time and they will be able to review and see whether number one sometimes they will even ask you to do a search to see whether there's if there's someone person, else who has done that uh, yeah who yeah. owns that name or design and uh, that's what is a background work that the that the registrar does to yeah, find huh. out whether you have uh, the, the application qualifies to proceed on to the registration process. And maybe for the for the benefit of our viewers, mm. which which organization deals with these registrations? So the organization that deals with this is called Kipi. Uh -huh. uh, I keep on mixing up the Kenya uh, Institute. Institute of of patents <laughs> kenya institute of it's not professional it's not professional we know it as kipi let yes. us maintain that we know it as kipi you'll find it in westlands uh, somewhere there or something eh? it's actually uh, uh somewhere near kianda school yeah uh, in lavington yeah, that's huh. where the institution is the institution is, is. yes so that's where, where the institution is so when you have an idea, for example, like what you say, the law and you, that mm. name, the law and you, or one first accord. you need, mm. or even one accord, first you need to have a search mm. to be able to enable you, is this your fresh idea, ma? The other people who thought about it before you. Mm. Then mm. after that, you need to know who, are you a company, are you a person, are you an organization? Mm. Then from there, another thing you do after that is for you to decide who is, when you are registering it, you have decided what you are registering, you have registered it, who, you have made a search, the other thing you have said, you present the application. Mm. Because there are forms that you present to that place. Mm. You talked about of 
uh, 12 copies of the application. Is there money that is needed for this, you to, 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 to register that? A money free? Yes, there's money. That's uh -huh. how the institution thrives. Yeah. So there's money that is required for the application uh -huh. and they will charge you per class because for every design, yeah. uh, we have different classes. For every name, you need to indicate what class or category do you fall under. And uh, when it comes to that, uh, you will find that some classes have to do with medical uh -huh. or science, uh, others are security, uh -huh. others are packaging, others are uh, pro professional offer, uh, services offered. And so there are different categories and that's why you actually need to, to deal with an advocate because they'll be able to advise you on to their isolate rate. isolate it nicely. Yes, and now these guys will charge you a fee depending on the, the number class. of classes. So the more the classes, the more you pay. The more you pay. Yes. And then maybe another thing, the reason why you need also to engage an advocate is because when you are registering the what the law and you, mm. there's someone you register it and someone else may use it again. Because you mm. cannot patent a word, mm. you, mm. alone. Mm. Because you is not your, it was not your idea, it was an alphabet word, mm. either way. Mm. So you need to, if you are doing a business, maybe a baking business or maybe an events company, there's someone you need to package it to be able to cover yourself from all directions so that in case someone else uses, but we'll reach on the, what are the repercussions if someone uses your name. Mm. But now the other thing you've said, there's money required, is there anything else required? Or if you pay the fees, you go do the, all the applications, your name has passed, mm. what happens now? So once that happens, then uh, once you have paid and they approve your, your, your design or name, the next thing is that they will publish it in a journal. In a they journal. have a journal, uh -huh. and this journal requires uh, it, it. It actually communicates to the general public for a period of sixty days, uh, inviting anyone who may have an opposition, an opposition or a protest against you registering or owning uh, the name exclusively. And so, once the sixty days um, uh, expire, after sixty days, then the registrar gives you a certificate, a trademark certificate. Saying now, mm. the law and you or the one accord is owned by so and so. Yes. What are the benefits of trademarking? There are several benefits of trademarking. One of them is that you exclusively own that name. Uh -huh. uh, number two, uh, a trademark allows you to be, to, 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 to be distinguishable as a person. So, for example, when you have the law and you, we know that the law and you only belongs to X. X, yeah. And so you distinguish yourself from every other, the law and It's us. more, I think, what you're saying, it's about branding. Because you may take all your time, you have branded yourself the law and you. Yes. Then you move from here to an accord, go to another place. Mm. Then you're not able to use this because it's not your trademark. Yes. That means now you start over from scratch again mm -hmm. to build again. Mm -hmm. So what are we saying? If, for example, maybe you have an idea in this country, mm -hmm. and maybe it's an events company, or maybe it's a sound company, or maybe it's a hotel. There's, for example, like we know, there's a hotel you know, you say, I want to enter into this petrol station, I want to enter into this hotel. There's a brand name mm -hmm. that it has built over time. And even if I live here, I go to Kisumu, and I see that petrol station, I see that hotel mm. i'm safe to walk inside there mm. because i know i'll get the same services yes so that helps you even to market yourself because you're able to build a name over time the other question maybe before we, we actually we, yeah the other benefit is that yeah. when it comes to even investors when they are interested in that name uh, -huh. uh and you're able to show that uh, one you exclusively own, own that it, yeah. brand then you are negotiating at a different level uh -huh. because then that's why again i was saying it's a property that you're able to sell because you can easily say that uh, you can sell the brand now the brand i want to leave this brand and the other people are invested uh, interested in, in investing in it or owning this brand then they're going to pay you a lot of money for it and we have major cases uh, actually in the world whereby the brand has stood out and people have actually walked away from the brand and they have been compensated for them to leave the brand they have and been go compensated. to do other things yeah a lot of money 
then someone has used my brand one accord i i i registered one accord as me mm. then as you have gone you have opened your own tv station and you have called it one accord yes. or you have decided to use to open a, a hotel or petrol station or a mitumba business as mm. one accord yes what can i do can so, i threaten you I'm a, what will what can i do there's a look of um there's something in law we call passing off or trying to create a brand to confuse other people yeah. so that you can benefit from their hard and money and sweat and so are you going out there and, and coming up with a, another brand called One Accord? Uh, that would basically mean that um, uh, the founder of One Accord has a right because I have seen the one advantage and benefit of uh, uh, registering a trademark is that you actually exclusively own that name. So it is known all over uh, the country of Kenya that uh, that name belongs to you only. And so what you can do is you can one go and uh, you can go to court and actually seek for one you can seek for uh, the person to be stopped from using that name yeah number two you can ask the court to also get that that person to pay you all the profits they have made from out of use, your name out of your name yeah and and so that is just um, have, uh, one of the advantages of actually registering a trademark because you can actually make money out of it if someone come, uses uses it. it yes and one of, uh, actually since we have we are just from the election uh, period you would find that some people had registered uh, some brands yeah or some political parties in their name and and actually got in trademarks and what that meant was uh, they would be able to negotiate there are actually cases where they were able to negotiate um, uh, to actually into sell millions. that name yeah, yeah into millions of shillings because somebody needed to use that brand in fact there's 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 one one person who benefited a lot mm. this is a 2007 elections mm. when one of the big parties broke into two yes into a similar name but they just added a letter at the end yes and that guy was paid a lot of millions mm. just to allow people to use that. Mm. So what we are saying is that you can sit down in your house, usiseme hakuna kazi, sit down, think of brands, register many of them and go out there selling them. Or wait for someone to use it mm. and sue them mm. so that you can be... But what we are saying is that you have come up with an idea, you have come up with a company, please go get a lawyer let you register especially for the people who have now big brands do you know sometimes you may start uh let's for example like one accord then when you are starting it you thought maybe it's ah it's my thing it's a small thing for me to communicate mm -hmm. to people mm -hmm. but later on in life like now it's one accord is everywhere in the country mm -hmm. so you 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 you, you come and find that it's bigger than what even you expected mm -hmm. it is very important that we are able to register some of these things to be able to protect us as we close i don't know what happens to time when we start talking what what else can you talk about trademarks uh because in the next show i want us to do copyrights i want us to do patents and industrial uh industrial tools and uh, everything so what can you say maybe in closing remarks on the issue of trademarks uh, uh trademarks are important you need to register it so that you are able to actually have a case in case somebody steals uh, your name and brand uh, number two, uh, it takes it takes between six to eight months yeah. to actually get your certificate out. out yeah. So the earlier you start, the better, because you'll be able to actually do that. Number three, you need to do a proper uh, due diligence on the names that you are going to, or the brands you want to register, because you don't want to find yourself uh, fighting somebody else who may have registered the same but maybe under the companies and so they owned that name earlier than you and you're trying to make a case for yourself in court so you need to do some proper uh, due, due diligence, diligence on everywhere. yes in fact when you're saying that i'll give people uh uh uh, uh do you call it a live example or true example mm. Mm. of one person uh, who went did the fast moving these brands that move fast mm. you have done a lot of production and distributed in all wholesales and shops and mm. supermarkets mm. Then from there, someone gives you a demand letter. This is our brand. We are, uh, can you withdraw everything from your shelves? So they come, go see our wakili, 
for these purposes, I wouldn't say who was the wakili, but they come see the wakili. And when the wakili comes, does a search, realizes that the, the other guys have. Mm. So the advice is, please, stop production. We need to change our brands. We need to withdraw. So you start even negotiating with the other wakili to buy time. I'm like, how fast can the things on the shelf move? Mm. Because now you're imagining recalling all those. We are talking about millions. Mm. So luckily, in the back and forth letters, oh, can we negotiate? Oh, we are not available this week. Can we come next week? But one, everything on the shelf moved. Mm. And we did a new thing and registered for them at Trademark. Mm. What we are saying, especially if you are starting a business, you may think it's a small one, but please, what Wakila said, start registering. Because someone else comes, and that is when you are told, stop, mm. start again. And at that point, it's where we end our show for tonight. We are looking forward to seeing you next week on the law and you. From next week, we'll be doing uh, a cover on different topics. We are doing uh, some of the topics we'll be dealing with is on the issue of adoption, on the issue of uh, guardianship, on the issue of arbitration, on the issue of victim protection, on the issue of copyrights, on the issue of intellectual properties in mm. it all. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, fasten your safety belt because we are going to cruise in the next season. May God bless you. Have a lovely night. See you next Tuesday at 8 p.m.